Okay, hello everyone. My name is Eric Masowski, and in this tutorial we're going to be looking at topology. Topology is basically the flow of surfaces across your object. So, what we want to do first is we want to break up this guy's space into key areas. Now what do I mean by key areas? Well, let's first take a look at an anatomy drawing. Now looking at the muscles, we see how the muscles flow around certain key features. So our edge loops and our topology should have a similar flow to it. So that when we go to deform it, everything looks natural. So let's take a look at a very simple shape here and see how edges play a role in our surface. Okay, so I have a very simple plane here with an edge going down the middle. If I just drag one of these vertices up, you see that we get a very pronounced L shape. This is because the edge in the middle here is acting like a crease for this surface. Now if we go ahead and we turn this edge so that it joins the other two vertices, you see that we get a very different shape or very different surface. So the lesson here is that we want to put an edge wherever we have a crease or a protrusion in the surface that we need to control. So if we jump back into Photoshop and take a look at this, this guy's face, the immediate thing that we can, the immediate places that we can start adding edges are at the wrinkles. So let's create a new layer. and choose a nice bright blue color. Give ourselves a brush size of about three. And just start drawing in certain areas. Remember, we just want to define the basic areas where there's either a large crease or wrinkle or where there's a large protrusion. And so I suggest that you just go through and try to isolate all the key areas. Okay, now this is what I came up with. And if, let's just take a really quick tour to, you know, see what was done. All right, so first off, we have the ones around the eyes, the upper eyelid, crow's feet, along the brow, along the forehead. For the forehead, I basically just used the wrinkles that were there. Then the bridge of the nose, tip of the nose. And you look here, this edge right here going over the cheek is representative of the cheekbone. So we're going to definitely need control over that because it's a very important protrusion. It gives a lot of character and definition to the face. Similarly, right underneath it defines kind of like the, the indentation right underneath the cheekbone. So again, we're going to need that information. Then we have the nasal, fold, nasal folds, and if we take a look at how the edges are going, they kind of allude to where they're going to join up. So this cheekbone one might come down to the side of the face, these two might join up, this one going all the way around the eye, that might join up, and so on. What we want to do at this point is we actually want to start drawing in our topology. This is a great planning stage before we get into actually modeling this character. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new layer, choose a nice bright red, zoom in a little bit, a little bit too much, and give ourselves a smaller brush size and then just start tracing some of the lines that we already put down, but also creating quads out of them. The reason that we're using quads is basically flexibility. What this will allow us to do is, one, when we go to subdivide this character to smooth it out, we won't get any pinching effects. If we have a triangle, we often get pinching down in that area. And by pinching, I mean like a little bump in the surface that is very difficult to get rid of or to mask or hide. And the second reason why we're using quads is that it gives us more flexibility for bringing it to other packages. For example, if you want to deform a mesh in, say, ZBrush, you should really have your surface made almost entirely of quads because its subdivision algorithms really depend on that. And when you're painting little details on your surface in ZBrush, if they're all quads, everything goes much, much smoother. Okay, so what I'd like you to do is to continue around breaking this up into quads. And we're going to take a look at the various stages of this, isolating key areas and little things to watch out for. Okay, so here's the first stage. We have the eye defined nicely. We have the area leading into the nose and coming down around the side of the, the nostrils. Now if you notice, we have a second we have a small set of quads that go right in between our nasal folds and the nostrils. And this will give us a lot of flexibility down the road for deforming our character into various expressions. Okay, so let's take a look at the, the next stage. So here we basically just added bits of the cheek filled in a little bit more of the nose. One thing to notice about this stage is right here, this quad. This is a direction changing quad, meaning that it changes one loop and allows it to flow in additional directions instead of just being completely contained within itself, kind of like this inner eye loop. So you notice as you trace around the eye, you can continue to go down the cheek or you can continue to go around the eye. So that makes sure that the topology continues to flow in every direction that it needs to. Okay, so let's take a look at the next stage. So here we worked on the chin area and the side of the mouth. One thing to notice about this uh, edge flow is this one going right from the nostrils down past the side of the mouth, dips down a little bit, and then up to the cleft of the chin. If we take a look at the unmodified side, we can see a very, very subtle edge right there. And that's what this edge is defining. Also, by bringing it out past the side of the mouth, this gives us the ability to pull these points out later and add or take away to the fat right here by the side of the mouth. So we could add dimples very easily or we can make really puffy cheeks very easily with this setup. Okay, so let's take a look at the next step. Okay, so here we just filled in the forehead, which is very, very straightforward, just quick lines up. Then we went and filled in the top of the, the lip or the upper lip and if we take a look at the edge flow here, you'll notice that from the cheekbone comes around and then tries to branch in vertically or approach the upper lip vertically. The reason for this is if we take a look at our anatomy drawing again, 
all the muscles coming out of the, the lip, or at least up here at the top, are coming out vertically. So we want to try to keep that sort of setup. All right, now finally, we have the nose. Now, one thing you may run into while breaking up your, your face here is you may get into a situation where you don't really see how it can be broken up into quads or strictly quads. One example is this nose or the tip of the nose here. See, we have several points that we need to join up and first instinct is to just continue this line all the way up and then continue this one across. Now what that gives us is this little triangle right here. And as mentioned before, we're going to get a little pinching and a little bump right on the tip of the nose. Not a good place to have an artifact. So we need to look at this uh, and try something else. Okay, so when you get into such a situation, again, go back to your guides and try to think of how the surface should flow. Forget about the quads for a minute. So in this case, we have the bridge of the nose coming down, but then we want it to wrap around underneath the nose. So we get something like this. Now that we have this, let's try attaching it to our existing edges. And then we can bring that one all the way across. So you can see now we have all quads and also the surface flows and when we mirror it, it will flow back up and into the eye. So we satisfy all our requirements just by taking another approach to it. Now whenever you find yourself into a very difficult situation, just create another layer and draw on that. That way you can easily go back to where you started. Okay. As an exercise, I would like you to go through and plot the blue lines or the guidelines on the side image here and then go through and break it up into quads. Be sure to separate those two into different layers so that you can toggle them on and off because when we use these as a reference plate we're only going to use the actual topology from the front view and then we're going to be using the guidelines from the side view. Okay, if you have any questions, feel free to email me or post on the forums. Thank you.